Hey Woodturners, welcome back to the shop. Tonight I'm going to show you my new CBN grinding wheel setup. This is a pair of the 4-in-1 radius edge wheels from Woodturning Wonders paired with the ubiquitous Rikon slow speed grinder. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on them, how I mounted them, and also I'm going to show you how I got them trued up. Thanks for watching. So far, I've been really impressed with these wheels. Before I bought them, I read lots of reviews online about them, not only about Ken's wheels, but about CBM wheels in general, and everyone says they're great. Um, but I, my expecta expectations were met and exceeded with these guys. So this one's an 80, and this is a, a 220. The 80 takes off this material as quickly as you would expect it to, whereas the 220 leaves a really, really nice finish. I opted for a 220 instead of the standard um, 80 grit that, that Ken has in his pairing just because sharper is better. And so far it's worked out for me. It leaves a nice edge and it's not at all slow to, to sharpen as compared to 180. Um, very happy with that choice. So other things I like about them is that they, they truly do run cool. My old friable wheels would blow up my tools fairly easily. And with these guys, you basically have to just be pushing a little bit too hard in order to blow the steel. Um, if you just let the wheel do the work, as they always say, just lightly hold it on there. It doesn't blow it at all. They work really well. Uh, the radius edge, I haven't found much of a use for it yet because as it's mostly intended for hollowing tool and I don't do any real hollowing, um, haven't really used it. But the sides I do like, uh, on my box scraper, I've used it to put a nice sharp, sharp left edge in this guy. Similarly for one of my bowl scrapers for doing the inboard side of this, the flat edge here has worked really well. Really well. I'm, I'm impressed with that. The thing I like the most about these wheels is that they're maintenance free. Um, as you know, they don't, they don't need dressing, they don't change size, they don't get grooves in them, they just are what they are. Uh, I can come over here from my lathe, put the tool in a jig or use it freehand, and turn it on and I sharpen and I'm back. Um, there's nothing to worry about. Whereas with friable wheels, you still might need to dress a little bit, which always puts this cloud of nasty dust into the air. And with my Tormek, I was always battling against glazed wheels. Um, I just could not keep them clean with the included stone grater. And then breaking out the, the truing tool was kind of a pain in the butt, took time, and then I would shed monetary tears whenever I'd run that thing across the stone. And, you know, be putting dollars into the, the water trough. So yeah, by far my, my favorite thing, just how dummy proof these things are. Um, I would love to see these come down in price someday and grinder manufacturers or resellers be able to offer package sets like this to wood turners. Um, right now I have two friable wheels sitting in a box someplace. Uh, it'd be awesome just to have these sold up front. Let's talk about how I got these things trued up. So I managed to get each wheel running within one one thousandth of an inch with side to side run out. So what I did there is I took my dial indicator and I set it up here on the block. And as measured from the outermost flat part of the wheel, um, I was able to get the needle to run within uh, between two lines on dial, dial indicator. I was pretty happy with that, but it wasn't easy. Um, Neither shoulder of this grinder was perfect. Um, in an ideal world, you could just take your, your wheel, slap it on, put, put on the spherical nuts, and you'd be golden. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So I'll describe my process. However, I'm not going to remove my wheels because that means I'll lose my, my accuracy. It's not going to happen. So I did one at a time, and um, it was I followed the, the standard... Um, progressive trial and error techniques. So what I did is I marked one side of the wheel at, at, at sort of a noon position. So let's pretend I was adjusting this one and this one was, was fixed. So what I did is I, I marked noon and I marked a starting point over on my target wheel and I would loosen the, the nut, <clears throat> move it one hour, you know, one one twelfth of the circle, uh, test the run out and if it wasn't suitable I would bring the wheel back to noon on the reference side and move this one more hour to the right, test again. Um, so I just followed that process until I found a, a pretty good sweet spot between two positions and I just incrementally jiggled it back and forth, loosening and tightening each time until I got acceptable run out. Um, 
I didn't bother to chase anything below one one thousandth of an inch. I mean, this is a bench grinder after all. And I'm a hobbyist wood turner. I didn't need anything better than that. Um, but I was pretty happy to be able to do that on a cheap grinder with a really, really narrow shoulder. Um, Ken Spherical Nut Solution does work really well. Um, if, I'll show a close-up later on, but the, the nut does not run true. Um, as he's described in his videos and literature, it does wobble a little bit from side to side. So the spherical nut for six bucks a piece uh, was a good investment. Here's some shaky cam footage of my setup in detail, just in case anyone's curious. So here you can see how the wheel is mounted directly against the old shoulder of the grinder. Um, there's nothing in there, just wheel against shoulder. Over here we have the spherical nut, and, or sorry, spherical washer setup um, that goes right between the, the factory nut from the grinder and the wheel. So pretty basic setup. Um, I'll give it a spin so you can see what's going on. You see how the, the spherical washer is, it goes wherever it needs to go. Um, as Ken has stated, it, it serves to fill the irregular gap between the nut and the wheel. So while it's spinning, let's fire this thing up just to give you guys a feel for what, what she looks like. So the half horse motor on this grinder, it's a little bit wimpy. It takes a bit to spin them up, but it's not the end of the world. Um, once it gets going, it, it has tons of power. It's never ever bogged down me or anything like that. Well, that'll do it for this video. If anyone has any questions about the wheels, the grinder, my setup, my Tormek, let me know in the questions down below and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching.